Hey folks, my name is Provis, and welcome to more New Cycle in what might end up being the finale for this series. I don't actually know yet, but what we're going to do is get started on constructing our great underground bunker because uh, the Earth is, um, well, doomed. <laughs> and I don't know if there are going to be any additional steps after this has been constructed, but we're going to find out together. Speaking of find out, there is something I need to check. Because I saw a comment, and also someone popped into my Discord very briefly, I think it might even have been a game dev, I'm not sure, to tell me, um, these mines level 2 may not be as useless as we thought, so let's check something. I had checked this before, I actually cut it out of the video, because it didn't make any sense or didn't seem to work, but I had thought of it. A conveyor belt from the rocks to the mine. No output, you would think that doesn't work, right? But I didn't check. Can you upgrade this? Oh, frick me, you can. Right, okay, hang on. Iron ingots, bronze ingots, steel. Doink, and did I just see an outlet? I think I did. Frick me, there's an outlet. Okay, uh, moment of uh, contrition here. Um, <laughs> I was wrong. It turns out that there is, in fact, a way of feeding the rocks directly into the mines to boost up their efficiency, which means that the tier two mining facilities are actually very worth it. Let's just find out how worth it. The answer appears to be, wow, a lot. It's <laughs> a 90% boost in efficiency. <laughs> we're up to 174 per day because now we're feeding the rocks directly in from these mines over here. Frickin' heck, okay. Yup, I was wrong. This is totally worth it. And actually, this changes a lot for me with the game because I had talked a bit before, right, about how, you know, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Introduce conveyor belts if you're not actually going to give the player any way to use said conveyor belts. Turns out there was a way, though. To be fair, this is not exactly the most obvious thing. I probably wouldn't have clicked on this, but now that I know it's there, that changes the game a bit. Okay, the devs were right. Um, I was wrong. And you know what? This is always one of the things. Every time that I am playing a new game like this, you should always take everything I say with a certain grain of salt because it's totally possible that the game is fine and I'm just missing a crucial step. That's what happened here, and I feel dumb about it. But you know what? I'm glad that this works. I'm glad the devs were right. Good for them. Unfortunately, I do think we're at a point where it doesn't really, you know, matter too much because, um, well, <laughs> I'm kind of at the point where I don't need any more help getting any sort of an ore, but at least this is a thing. No, the real kicker is can I get enough gosh dang machinery? So then I guess one question I would have is, is there a way of boosting up the petrol refinery that I'm being stupid about too? See, usually if there's a conveyor option, you're going to have something like this, right? The conveyor belt settings. I don't see anything here, so I know that's not something I'm missing. Can I upgrade the pumps? It doesn't say that there's an upgrade for these either. So as far as I know... No, I don't think that I can boost this. Again, I'm terrified I'm wrong because diesel seems like a really important aspect of the game. I don't think boosting any extra workers over here really is going to help me, though for some reason... Well, now I've actually got a stash of oil. I think it's because I had no specialist over here and it wasn't working for a time, but okay. Since that is the case, and we actually could maybe get myself some diesel, let's see if we can work toward getting those combustion engines. I may not need the plant, but I'd like to say that I at least researched everything in the game before it was over, you know? Oh, no, wait, never mind. We're already out of oil again. <sighs> yeah. I don't know. I think we burned through our diesel fuel so quickly that we probably are never going to be able to get enough. Unless I actively were to turn off my train station, which I could do. But I'd rather not, honestly. What do you mean, complete the railroad tracks and build the loading zones? I don't know why it's not showing me this, as if I don't have any trains. They should all be still out and about, because I built everything. I assume this is still working as intended. It really better be. By the way, can I just point out that now that we've, like, really built up the colony, like, zoom out and just take a look at this real quick. Like, look how sprawling this is. I like the aesthetic of this game. What can I say? The diesel punk style really does it for me. I think it's fun. I think I just saw something about Bunker Phase 1 being complete. Hold on. Hold on. Turn around here. I think we got some bricks done. Hey, we did. Okay, there's what other things do we need. Well, we need to get a lot of steel, wire, bronze ingot, and cement. Good news. Most of this is already done. Bad news. Uh, it's going to eat up a lot of precious steel and wire, but all right. I'll bet you Sage 3 is going to get really annoying, though. How much you want to bet they want a lot of machinery? I'll bet you they ask for a lot of machinery. Oh, we actually are moving on to Stage 3, and sure enough, they want a lot of machines. 45. <laughs> All right, um, well, I had hoped to use some of those machines to get a few more upgrades, but that's not gonna happen. 
Oh, I just noticed something. This up here says the bunker construction area consists of six phases. Not three. I only saw three here. Oh, there's another segment. Structure construction, phase four, five, and six. Yeah, sure enough. Ha! Huh. Well, um, what's going to be more complicated than the machinery? I thought this was the most difficult thing to manufacture. I'll bet you I need either, like, tons of food or clothing or something. Like, get the bunker ready, and then we have to provide for our people so we can all retreat underground. I think this is the last of that. There we go. Okay. So the bunker is now coming together. That's kind of a cool looking thing. What's going on down there? I don't know. Why do we even have that? All right. Next stage. Oh, good Lord. All right. More steel, wire, bronze ingots, and cement. That's fine, except for the wire. It all comes down to the wire. <laughs> uh, sometimes my puns are funny. You know something we haven't upgraded? We haven't upgraded our kilns yet. These actually don't require any machinery, which surprises me. I don't know if the industrial kiln is going to cost me, uh, or rather uh, has an opening, sorry, for a conveyor belt. If it does, I can just go ahead and hook some sand in over here, and all of a sudden this thing is going to be great. It has an output and an input over here. There it is. All right, hang on. Glass. Let's go ahead and get everyone assigned over here. Perfect. Yeah, okay, cool. So we should now actually be able to get this hooked up. So the quarries are actually pretty easy to get set. And that's good because these uh, these kilns are down to minus 55 efficiency without any sand. One efficiency. That is truly abysmal. But with some sand in place, we jump up to 106. Okay, yep, that'll do the job. Looks like we finish up with our next phase. Actually, phase five is easy. I just need to deliver a bunch of tools. I can do that. We used to have plenty of tools. Actually, that, that begs the question, where do my tools go? Minus 177 a day? Well, it shouldn't be too hard for us to go ahead and make that back up. We are only missing four. There we go. Moving on to the last stage. Thank God, still no machinery. Wire, though. <laughs> it's always wire. All right, but no. Bronze, cement, and even the steel, not a problem, man. Totally fine. Wire, though? Yeah, I need to start mass producing that. But you know what? We almost have enough machinery that if I wanted to, we could just go ahead and get another one of these metal factories up and running. And I think I do want to do that. Here we go, number three, get that set up. I need more specialists and stuff. We can go ahead and get the conveyor belts hooked up. That'll be three of these factories set to getting just wire, two to getting steel. Wouldn't mind getting a third at some point. And that's just to make sure I can stay on top of my basic resources to build enough things and get tools, let alone however many I need in order to start mass producing the motors so I can get all of the uh, machinery. But. By the time we get to the point where I can mass manufacture machinery, I'm not even sure that we really care. Like, by then, I've, I've kind of got everything upgraded, so who needs more machinery? Anyway, with that factory up and running, I would like to think that we'll start mass producing wire, and this will be done in no time, and that'll be all six phases complete. Then the question is, is that a victory condition, or is something else horrible gonna happen to me? There we go. All phases are complete. Wrap up construction and start operating the bunker. Okay, there are more things to do. I was kind of hoping there would be, to be honest, so this is very good. All right, a new home. The bunker is the only hope for the continuity of our species, to which all of our futures will be tied. The planet's surface becomes too dangerous, so this is going to be our new world. We have capacity. The higher it is, the better our chances of survival. Facility balance. The number and distribution of infrastructure buildings is very important. Okay, so we have to have enough balance of various different buildings to keep our people safe and happy. And then also, this is where the workforce comes into play. Every construction task is prolonged or shortened in proportion to the workforce. And then finally, we have sectors. Really? Okay, um, specific depths, and then inside the sector, which is a huge enclosed space, we can make it into a living space. And I'm guessing the deeper you go, different kinds of things can be done. We must reach the highest capacity as fast as we can and have the infrastructure to meet every need. Oh, cool. Actually, if I, like, kind of click on the bunker, I can see what looks like a shaft of death. <laughs> Come on, guys! Hop on in! It's great! Ah! No, okay, this is fine. Right, well, this objective has been completed. So this is the beginning of the ends. Creating a new world. Uh, the biggest step is taken. The entrance to the bunker and the first section of the main shaft are complete. Now we can start excavating the segregated areas with efficient death and also build infrastructure for a community to live in. We will need at least 57 pairs of people, as less than that will cause fatal biological problems for the population in the long term. 
Okay, so that's not so bad. I just need to be able to fit 114 people and then provide enough materials and other things that they'll survive. I'm gonna go ahead and get some more upgrades here in some of these mills. Let's make sure that I'm able to provide plenty of concrete per day. And now that I'm merging some stone and sand in here, 146% efficiency. Now that's what I call pretty good. There we go. Let's go ahead and build up this sector. Looks like it's going to take a little bit of time, but we should have a full workforce. So this should be about as fast as I can make it. And I'll take this time to go ahead and stash up literally everything else I can, because I bet you we need a lot more cement and a lot more wire. And God forbid, maybe some more machinery too. There we go. All right. With that comes, ooh, a whole bunch of empty facility slots. Okay, so we can have dormitories, cramped dormitories, or stacked ones. They have, it looks like, the same costs regardless, but we can see the needs. And the more we stack people together, the more they're going to need other things. So yeah, planning out exactly what we're going to provide is obviously going to be difficult. Cramped, interestingly, has the best value in terms of living quarters per water, or sorry, per food. Because 25 for 20, 40 for 15, 60 for 25. Production electricity. Cramped seems to be the best value almost across the board. But what other things do we have here? The underground well. Okay, that takes machinery. Rainwater and then drip chambers. I have to say I think this is the best to go for. Food. Fungal tubule caverns. Gross. Um, indoor farms. Multi-species barn. Uh Okay, takes less water, doesn't provide nearly as much food, does provide some logistics, whatever that's going to mean. Under production, we have compartments, foundry and furnace, artisan pods, electricity, multi-fuel, so on and so forth, provide as much power as possible. Thermal exhaust could be good for 10 machinery, ouch. Ventilation, circulation, condensation, and air treatment. And then finally, logistics with storage repository cooled cellar. So yeah, um... There probably is a perfect balance for what you're able to get. How many slots do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight slots in total. And seven different types of things to do. I might need to stop for a second and kind of plan this out because it's kind of important we find a very balanced setup here, I think. Okay, just spent a fair bit of time over here working in, um, just like Microsoft Excel, planning some stuff out. I think I've got a plan where all eight of these can be used, actually only seven, and I end up being in the net positive for everything, assuming we go for the cramped dormitories first. So, for example, let's go to water over here. I wanted to get the underground well, which does take some machinery. That's fine. For my food, I wanted to go for the indoor farm at 35 food, which is actually excessive. You could go for less and do the fungal, and this would be fine. But this is what I'm going to go for here anyway. Under production, uh, what did I go for? I think I went for this one right here with the nine production, the production hall compartments. That should be good. Under electricity, you have to go for the really big one of the multi-fuel generator, partly because we went for as much food as we did. Could have pulled back on that, and maybe we could have gotten a smaller generator. Ventilation's not actually super-duper important. I think I went for the circulation ducts. Only one of these is all you really need. And then under logistics, you shouldn't really need more than the storage compartment right here. Actually, you could go for the repository. This would give me more production, but take away more electricity. I don't really need that. But sure, we'll just take this. Perfect. All right, so with all of this done... Follow this, let these all get built up, and let's see how we do. Oh, though I seem to have made a smaller mistake already. Due to the constraints of the main shaft, you can only construct one sector and one infrastructure at a time. Too many things at once slows it down. Well, I mean, all right. Well, mm -mm. I mean, didn't mean to slow it down by accident there, but sure, whatever, it's fine. It looks to me like more things are building than just one, so we're, we're good. Of course, then we have to put together a difficult list of who's going to go and who's going to die. Uh, people are right to be nervous if you think about it. It's a miracle of our willpower that we can even continue our daily routines at this point. There's an air of uncertainty. What do we do? It makes sense to create a healthy and young population that continues, or we could choose a different path. Leaving this choice to the people. Um, okay. Do we go for the most logical and risk-free path? Set conditions by looking at a series of indicators and announce the people who meet these conditions will be accepted. Everyone should have a chance. We'll draw lots, or... 
Trusting people is difficult for a chief. We all live in the same world. Let the people choose. Oh, God. Um, do I, do I let the people choose? Ooh. Um, I feel like taking the logical and risk-free path is the way to go. I mean, it makes sense to give our children the best chance, right? Gosh, I hope that's not a mistake. Serious questions from the community. Brewing controversy. We're all fearful and anxious of a certain disaster, but an uncertain future is even scarier. We don't want to think what's going to happen if we don't build the shelter. We need 47 pairs. Who's going to determine who they will be? I'm sure we will find a solution. No one wants to let go. <laughs> Whether we should live or not should not be an issue to be resolved. None of us know how you expect us to continue if there's no salvation for us all. No matter how it is, please clarify the issue as soon as possible. We will do our best to secure as many as possible. Okay. Um, when lives are at stake, even the most logical answers can cause a crisis. Rest assured we will have room to spare... There won't be room for everyone. This isn't perhaps obvious, a harsh truth, but it will cause outrage. So I feel like no matter what, we're going to have issues. We can keep trying to be optimistic, but eventually the piper is going to come calling. Or we can say, mm, you know, it's fine. Or, or we can say, nah. Gosh, no matter what, we're freaking screwed. I'm going to be logical, but I can see this becoming a problem very quickly. Yeah, we need to build this bunker and then get people in there as quick as we can before there's a riot. And then just shut the doors. Let Earth die. You know, I actually really like that we're getting into this phase of the game. I, I feel like we're now starting to face true moral crisis with our people. We always knew that was supposed to be a threat, right? That there was going to be some serious problems. I feel like now we finally have encountered those serious problems. And the game's been kind of easy on me up to this point. Now, though, now we got to make the tough calls. Can I also point out that we have almost perfected the economy at this point? The only thing I don't have enough of right now is going to be things like diesel. I mean, paper, don't worry about it. I'm just doing, like, some training and stuff. But we're really even close on the diesel. Everything else I have is in the positive right now. We are prospering. It's a shame that the gosh dang planet has to go and die on us. Oh, what's this? Hereditary hazards. Uh, let's see. The bunkers establish rules to govern its residents in a fair and humane manner. Some people carry inherited diseases. Yeah, I guess... I mean... Ah, ooh, boy. This is getting dangerously close to eugenics, isn't it? Um, alright. People with ancestors with hereditary disorders, as far as we can trace, should not be allowed to settle. Anyone who does not have a contagious or obvious disease can be chosen as a settler. Um... Or, we've come this far, anyone who meets the requirements can be selected, regardless of health. Oh, boy. I don't, I don't really know what to do in this case. This feels like one of those nasty, um, kind of ethical questions, right? Like, we're talking about the final future of humanity. So I would think, you know, you don't want to have any hereditary disorders, so it can't be passed along and give us the best possible chance for the remaining human race. That said, as a general rule, I'm not exactly into this whole, like, perfect genetics thing, so I don't know. I do think it's something we should probably consider. Hmm. Well, I mean, obviously no contagious or obvious diseases. Like, if that is an obvious thing, no, they cannot be in there. I'm gonna say... Oh, God, we need a reasonable middle ground. I don't know. I really am not sure how I'm supposed to feel about any of that, to be honest. Um, I, I feel like the correct decision is probably to say any hereditary disease must be banned. It just doesn't feel right to do that. If I'm honest, I'm kind of expecting that we're going to have some sort of an epilogue in this game. Something that's like, yeah, because of the decisions you made, they all died horrible deaths or something like that, you know? It takes a very, very long time to build anything down in this bunker, though. Which is probably why they warned me, hey, don't try to do too much or it's going to take forever. Which, uh, you know, fair enough, I guess. Actually, we're just about to finish up this last farm and take a look at that. We have officially reached uh, full equilibrium. So there we go. That kind of proves my point. If we follow this exact same strategy on every level, we're guaranteed to be okay. Though I think on at least a handful of different areas, we can make some tweaks when we start overproducing things like food. I keep building out more of these oil wells over here, hoping that even the teeniest little bit is going to be enough to get me some more diesel. And it's actually becoming more important than ever before, because if I want to extend down to a fifth level... Oh, I barely had the diesel for a moment there! Ugh, the point is, I need diesel in order to get this last sector. I'm this close, I just gotta wait, 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 got it! There we go! Alright, we can at least get five levels. 
I don't know if I'll be able to get a sixth, but we can at least get that one. There we go. All right. What's wrong now, people? A horrific fate. Oh, they're going to be upset. We think this is the end of the road. All of our measurements, all that work, all the results we checked and rechecked over and over again. We know for certain we haven't made a mistake. We've already started to read the results that we did not expect to see for at least another century. The catastrophic end is approaching. We have five to ten years at most under this rapidly diluting atmosphere. Even during this period, harmful effects may occur. No matter what, we must do everything we can to avoid a silent death. Everything must focus on the bunker. Fair enough. All right, so it's year 45. I'll bet you we don't have any longer than year 50. And if I'm completely honest, I think that's okay in the sense that I think we're actually on track to meet our needs. No problem. I've got more food than I know what to do with here. Let's try building out a bunch more stuff here. I could go for some pretty stacked up dormitories now. I mean, we could do this. Try to really cram some people together. Can I just point out something slightly sadistic, by the way, as this game is being released? I seem to remember in the uh, the content brief when I first accepted the sponsorship for the uh, first couple videos of this series. Um, and they were talking about, hey, yeah, the world's destroyed by a solar flare. Just so you know, by the way, there's supposed to be a really big solar flare in January 2024. It's like, don't tell me that. That's just, no, what are you trying to do, scare me? All I know is it's working. After this, a solar flare apparently can kill the planet. Yeah, that's scary. I will admit, <sighs> um, waiting for the end of the world is a little bit, I don't know, slow. I mean, I'm trying to build these things out, but there's really not much advantage as far as I can tell building multiple components at once. It is about the same amount of time to just do it one at a time. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing. And uh, I got a long way to go. I can keep digging more layers, but I mean, for the most part, we're looking pretty good here. Just, you know, twiddling our thumbs and praying we don't have an uprising. Oh my gosh, and I actually produced just enough diesel that I actually can get the combustion engines. Ha <laughs> ha! Just in time! Okay, yeah, I'll be able to finish all of the techs. All I did was I literally just turned off the petrol refinery until I stashed up like 4,000 oil. Then turned it on, and I've just been barely producing enough. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, year 50 has come and gone. And, uh... No end of the world yet! Hmm, watch this all be a hoax. Well, at this point, I think I've been uh, working on the bunker for ooh, about two or so hours-ish. Maybe a little bit longer. It doesn't seem like anything's really happening, but the game did tell me very specifically there was five to ten years remaining before everything came collapsing. Oops, I'm out of food. Hold on, there we go. So, um, I'm gonna wait for a bit longer. And we're gonna keep building this out as much as I can. I still have no idea if I should be trying to get more population or keep building this stuff up. For all I know, it doesn't even matter, truth be told. Uh, once you hit a certain threshold, maybe we just outright win. Or, let's all keep in mind, this is an early access version of New Cycle. Not just the version I'm playing on, but just in general, it is an early access title. There's a lot more that still can and will be changing. Could very well be that there isn't an ending, though I will admit that would be a little anticlimactic. Honestly, though, I do feel like this is one area of the game that could use a little bit of fine-tuning. Um, I mean, my economy is doing great. It only takes minor tweaks. All I'm really doing is just sitting around and waiting for this. And uh, this takes a while, like a very long time. Not as engaging or threatening as I would like, especially since the game did say, hey, uh, bad things are going to happen in the next five to ten years. And, and nothing bad has. N nothing at all. But again, early access, I, I think that the end game is probably one thing that is going to get some of the most changes as this game continues its development. Oh, wait, 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 there's the event! Final moments! There's nothing left to say. This is it, Chief. All measurements show that we'll be able to observe blue skies for at most another year before the atmosphere reaches the terminal stage. So when you said five to ten years, you meant exactly ten years, like down to the dot ten years. Got it. Some of our weaker brothers and sisters are already showing signs of deteriorating health. Now we have to drop everything and start the migration to the bunker as planned. It's the beginning of a new life for us, and hopefully the chance to start another cycle of being. We have about 20 to 25 days specifically. Then construction wraps up, the entrance is sealed, and that is it. Well, phenomenal timing, because it looks like the very last piece of the bunker will be complete within exactly 20 days. I wonder if maybe the very fact that I had filled in the last segment of the bunker is what triggered the event. I have no idea. Hey, some strangers want to join. 
sure, you're all welcome to just sort of die alongside us. Why not? Oh, wait, am I actually watching a migration happening right now? I am. Oh, cool. They actually have, like, the graphics of having a bunch of people pack up and head straight for the bunker. Does that mean that people are actually leaving their jobs? Because that would be kind of cool. Ah, but if I'm honest, I am going to miss New Bjork. What a beautiful city we were able to construct out of absolutely nothing. Human ingenuity at its absolute best. Reusing all the fossil fuels necessary to kill this planet one last time out of spite. Oh man, it's great. Overall though, I'd say I had a lot of fun with New Cycle. I think this is a really, really promising survival city builder. There are a few places where it kind of drags. A few production things I would rebalance. Yes, we made the discovery that I'm an idiot and didn't realize I could upgrade the rocks. Whoops, but once we figured that out, that was kind of cool. Everything's looking great. But, overall, I don't know. Even with all those handicaps that may have been self-inflicted, we had a lot of fun and we were able to build out a pretty sprawling, awesome city. With over a thousand population. And you know, in our final moments of reflection, one of the things to keep in mind, the developing studio that made this game, Core Engage, this is their first game, if I remember correctly. Like, the first game they've ever made. That's really impressive. This was a very ambitious project, and while it certainly has some room to go and there's a lot more I can look forward to here, I'm very impressed and very happy with what they're able to accomplish. This feels great. Oh, and the game's going dark. All right, it is the year 4,332. What? What is this? This is all kind of creepy. Hold on, why did we create an army of scary soldiers? <laughs> it's been 1,332 years, six months, and five days since the gates were sealed. Oh, is this like an epilogue? Ground Nation has been alive for 51 generations, and today it is about to set sail in a completely new horizon. The first centuries were very difficult for mankind to get used to such a life and accept this, but damnable condemnation, this eternal bondage. The sheer numbers of our first inner fathers gave the greatest strength. The enormous sacrifices of our forefathers, weak but honorable men, who gave us this home and treasures that we still preserve thousands of years later, have enabled us to endure every hardship for generations. May the gods of the underworld bless them. What? Okay. From the mighty blood of our chosen forefathers, we were born armed with greatness and blessed by fire. We lived so that we could build our entrusted home step by step by digging into the bosom of this dead rock to create another world. And we died, buried in our gardens, returned as bread for our children, so that the judgment might be eternal. Wow, okay, there's a lot to read here. I'm gonna go ahead and move along, but it looks like this is our hell, and we have had to survive in the absolute worst possible conditions. Did we create... What, what what happened? Did we create some sort of, like, super mutant, super soldier, maybe cultish proto-fascist army? I don't know what happened. I'm curious. That feels like a whole new game in and of itself. And maybe that's exactly the plan. I have no idea. Well, regardless, a very big thank you to all of you who stuck it out throughout this series. I had a lot of fun. Again, it was a little slow in a few places. There's a few things I would change, and yes, I complained about some stuff. It turns out was completely fine. That is my fault, not the devs. But the point is, this game in early access, especially for a first title by a new studio, this is a very big, ambitious project, and there's so much room for this to continue getting bigger and better as time goes on. So if you haven't already picked up the game, certainly something you may want to keep an eye on as it continues to develop. So yeah, be sure to hit that like button down below, leave a comment, subscribe, hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.